Good morning, everybody. It is nine o'clock on this Thursday morning in Nicosia, Cyprus. And I thought we would do a quick video update and talk about Putin's speech to the uh, Council of Legislators in St. Petersburg. And let's also talk about the gas for rubles. We have another country that is going to join Bulgaria and uh, Poland by not accepting the gas for rubles payment terms. And then we'll do a clown world and we'll wrap up the video with the clown world. So let's first talk about Putin's speech in St. Petersburg, his hometown of St. Pete. So Putin was speaking to uh, a council of legislators in uh, St. Petersburg, and he said this quote, which really caught the attention of uh, mainstream media, really, really caught the attention of, uh, of the media the collective West, he said, if someone decides to intervene in the ongoing events from the outside and create unacceptable strategic threats to us, they should know that our response to those oncoming blows will be swift, lightning fast. He also said, we have all the tools to do this, tools that no one except us can brag about, but we're not going to brag. We'll use them if such a need arises. Putin did not specify which tools could, de could be deployed, but the word that he used, lightning fast, really uh, freaked out the collective West in a big, big way. I mean, it's obvious that Putin is talking about hypersonic missiles. He's referencing the, uh, the launch last week of the, of the RS-28 Sarmat missile, which is an intercontinental ballistic missile. It's kinetic. It could be nuclear. Uh, something like 15 warheads, 18,000 miles, hypersonic, just a devastating uh, weapon. And Putin was just basically saying, look, we've got the hypersonic missiles. You guys have no defense against those hypersonic missiles. And uh, those hypersonic missiles can also reach very, very far away distances. And they can also, they don't have to travel north either. They can actually travel south if they're heading towards the U.S., which is just going to provide the American defenses with all kinds of, uh, of headaches. So, um, yeah, Putin was sending a warning. And the reason he's sending that warning is because of the, uh, the projection that we're hearing from the collective West with regards to tactical nuclear weapons being used. And uh, Russia understands that whenever the collective West... Victoria Newland, Anthony Blinken, Biden, Saki, Liz Truss, Boris Johnson, whenever all of these bozos, they talk about Russia using tactical nukes uh, in this conflict with Ukraine, the Russians understand that all they're doing is they are projecting. They're using what the Russians call mirroring techniques. And so whatever they're planning on doing, they, they project them onto, uh, onto Russia. So... The Russians understand that as, uh, as the Ukraine military is getting ground down and is losing in Ukraine, as the Alensky project completely falls apart, as the economic war of attrition is boomeranging back to the EU and to the US causing inflation, food shortages, energy issues, just all kinds of, uh, of chaos. As all of this is happening, Biden's poll numbers at an all-time low. Alensky, Alensky uh, partaking in, in, uh, in Coke binges and, uh, and, just, and just falling apart, his entire regime falling apart. They know that, uh, that, that the West is going to get desperate and they may actually resort to some sort of tactical nuke false flag. And so they're, they're sending the warning. They're saying, don't you dare. If you get involved and use some sort of tactical nuke or something like that, well, we're going to respond. And Putin is also sending the warning to, uh, to the collective West who may be thinking that another way to, to stop or prevent the, the impending doom of, of Ukraine and to prevent the Ukraine project from completely falling apart, maybe trying to save, save some face, is if they, uh, they move into the West. He may also be signaling, signaling to, the, uh, to the collective West and to NATO 
don't you dare get involved in this conflict by thinking you can enter the west of Ukraine and, uh, and put in place some sort of peacekeeping liberation force. We've been hearing the, uh, the Polish side actually float this idea with, uh, with each passing day. They're floating this idea more and more that they can somehow go into Ukraine with a liberation peacekeeping force and kind of gobble up the, the west of Ukraine as the Russians gobble up the east and, and the south of, uh, of Ukraine. And perhaps their goal may be to prevent the, uh, the eventual takeover of Odessa and creating a land corridor all the way to Transnistria. So Putin is sending a lot of warnings to the collective West. And uh, one thing we know about Putin is that his warnings should be taken very seriously. He does not bluff. So hopefully there won't be any tactical nuke, false flag. Hopefully we don't get any kind of peacekeeping liberation force entering the west of Ukraine. And, uh, and Putin's warnings do not have to become reality, but we'll see. We'll see. The, uh, the collective West is, is panicking in a big, big way. They had this meeting of 40 defense ministers in uh, Ramstein Air Base in Germany. NATO generals and defense ministers from 40 countries. I mean, they're, they're trying to figure out a way to, uh, to destroy Russia, to beat Russia. That's why you have these 40 guys sitting in, a, in an air base in Germany to plot and to scheme their way to, uh, to prevent the collapse that's coming. You know, Austin, Lloyd Austin said it. They're going to, to move heaven and earth to, to help Ukraine survive and to help Ukraine win. And so who knows how far they'll go. But when you have 40 generals and 40 defense ministers sitting down in an air base, well, they're plotting their, their war plans. What other way is there to, uh, to describe it? So on that very day when they were meeting, Putin comes out with this warning. Let's get to the subject now of the gas for rubles because we have a country that is going to be joining Poland and Bulgaria, and that country is Finland. Now, this is not really a big deal for, uh, for Finland or for anyone that's been monitoring this, uh, this development I don't think this is a big deal either for uh, Gazprom as well, because while Finland imports 75% of its gas from Russia, they only use 6% of gas in their overall uh, energy uh, mixture, in their energy mix. So 6% of Finland's overall energy is actually dependent on natural gas. So. It's not really that big a deal for Finland, 6%. They'll be able to phase that out pretty easily, I imagine. Um, yeah, 75% of that 6% is coming from Gazprom, but the, the government in Finland will find a way to, uh, to deal with it. So this is not really that big a deal. They actually, they've actually said that they're gonna work with their Baltic partners with this Baltic interconnector scheme, and they'll figure out ways to, to phase out natural gas in full. So this is not really a big surprise. And uh, I don't think it's really, it really surprises uh, the Kremlin either that Finland is going to be uh, siding with Poland and with Bulgaria. I mean, Bulgaria is in big, big trouble. Bulgaria uses 90% uh, of their natural gas comes from, uh, from Russia and they're highly dependent on natural gas. I mean, in a big, big way. So. Bulgaria is in trouble. Poland, Poland is trying to find ways to kind of patchwork their, uh, their natural gas needs. And, and so this is what Poland is doing. Poland said that it can source gas via two links with Germany, including a reverse flow on the Yamal pipeline. They've said that they can link with Lithuania, which has an annual capacity of, uh, of 2.5 BCM, and they're going to open on May 1st an interconnector with the Czech Republic for up to another 1.5 BCM. Poland is also saying they can add another 5 to 6 BCM via a link with Slovakia. It can be shipped in. And uh, PGNIG is also saying they can import 6 BCM per year via LNG terminals. And they're also working to, to get another 3 BCM 
via Norway as well. Another, th another three to 10, up to 10 BCM via, via Norway. So basically what, what, what Poland is doing is that they're just trying to patch up some sort of system where uh, they can do away with gas coming from Russia directly to Poland and get that gas via five or six different alternative methods. But at the end of the day, most of the gas that's going to be coming to Poland via these, these alternative mes methods is still going to be Russian gas. That's the, that's the kicker to all of this. So Poland is going to be paying a hell of a lot more for the same Russian gas that they would have gotten if it just came directly via the pipeline from Russia. Instead, they're going to work it via Norway and via Lithuania and ship through Slovakia and uh, using reverse gas flows via Germany <laughs> and all of these ridiculous things, which is just going to end up costing the, uh, the Polish consumer and the Polish businesses a lot, lot more. Same Russian gas, just five, 10 times more. That's it. So make sense out of that. The EU is actually thinking about siphoning off the gas as well. They were actually thinking that one way they could uh, deal with uh, Gazprom's notice to Poland and, uh, and Bulgaria would be to siphon off gas. And now they've used this technique in Ukraine. Ukraine was actually siphoning off gas for many, many years that was transiting from Ukraine to Europe. What Ukraine would do is they would just siphon off the gas as a transit country and Russia would look the other way as they were siphoning off the gas. And, and there was an energy crisis in Ukraine at one point in time, but that was resolved. But for the most part, Russia uh, felt sorry for, uh, for the Ukraine people and they didn't want them to, to freeze and to suffer. So they allowed uh, Ukraine to siphon off the gas that was transiting via Ukraine to Europe and they didn't say anything. Well. When, uh, when Ursula van der Leyen kind of floated the idea of siphoning off gas for Poland and Bulgaria, Gazprom was quick to respond. And uh, this is what Gazprom said. It warned that the unauthorized withdrawal of gas volumes transiting through Poland and Bulgaria to other European countries such as Germany would result in a reduction of transit supplies. So Ursula van der Leyen, in her infinite wisdom, her infinite stupidity, came up with, uh, with the idea of, you know what, as it's transiting through Poland via its destination country of Germany, why don't we just siphon off the gas that Poland needs? And, uh, and the Russians aren't going to do anything about it. Gazprom isn't going to say anything wrong. Gazprom was quick to, uh, to say, you know what, if you siphon off gas that is heading for Germany, well, then we're just going to decrease the gas supplies to Germany because it's being siphoned off by Poland or by Bulgaria. So, yeah, that's that plan's not going to work, Ursula. That is not going to solve your energy problems. Ursula actually said this in a tweet. She said, Gazprom's announcement is another attempt by Russia to blackmail us with gas. We are prepared for this scenario. We are mapping out our coordinated EU response. Europeans can trust that we stand united and in solidarity with member states impacted. So do you actually believe that Ursula van der Leyen is going to be able to solve this energy, process, this energy crisis? Ursula van der Leyen is the person that we're going to be, as European citizens, we're gonna be betting our energy future on. Let me read you a story about Ursula van der Leyen from the express.co.uk that was published a year ago, and it has to do with Ursula's tenure as German defense minister in 2014, 2015. Now, when she was defense minister, there was the, uh, the war in the east of Ukraine, in the Donbass. And so as the German defense minister at the time, the German army faced a shortage of equipment for years, but the situation became so precarious in 2014 that some soldiers had to take matters into their own hands. The Bundeswehr troops tried to hide their lack of arms by replacing heavy machine guns with broomsticks 
during NATO exercises. After painting the wooden sticks black, the German soldiers attached them to the top of armored vehicles, according to a confidential army report, which was leaked to German broadcaster ARD. A defense ministry spokesperson said the use of broomsticks was not a common practice and that the decision of the involved soldiers was hard to comprehend. According to the ministry, the armored vehicles were also not supposed to be armed. It is not clear how many broomsticks were substituted for machine guns. However, the revelation came at the worst possible moment for Ms. von der Leyen. The same day, the Ukrainian army suffered a defeat at the hands of pro-Russian rebels in the town of Debaltsovo, putting a renewed focus on the question of whether Europe's NATO allies would be able to manage the crisis militarily without American intervention. That happened in 2014-15. The German military had a crisis, a shortage of weapons. And how did Ursula von der Leyen handle that? Well, the German military were given broomsticks and they painted those broomsticks black and they placed those broomsticks on armored vehicles. <laughs> so this is the person that we are now trusting, Ursula von der Leyen. She is going to, uh, to solve this incredibly complicated energy crisis that is self-inflicted because of the idiotic sanctions that the EU placed on Russia. <laughs> Ursula von der Leyen is going to lead us out of this mess. The worst, the most incompetent German defense minister, perhaps in all of history, and she is going to, uh, to figure this out. Yeah, I don't see it happening. I just don't see it happening. So, uh, that's, what's, uh, that's what's going on with the gas for rubles. That's the latest news there. Let's do a quick uh, clown world. Let's do a clown world. And this clown world uh, was sent to me via V-Contact. And it has to do with a Russian cartoon called Masha and, uh, and the Bear. And this Russian cartoon is a very wholesome cartoon, actually. It's very, very wholesome, very innocent. But uh, according to German media channel Die Welt, this cartoon is peddling Russian propaganda. And why is it peddling Russian propaganda? Well, according to Die Welt, let me cross here. The, uh, the Russian cartoon, Masha and the Bear, paints Russians as very nice people. And you can't have that type of indoctrination for German children. So Die Welt said in a statement, they called the cartoon Masha and the Bear propaganda. And they said that the most, uh, and they said that the bear in it is shown to be specially kind and tolerant so that German European children do not hate Russia so much. That is the statement from Die Welt. They're concerned that this cartoon is going to actually paint Russians as uh, nice people and the German children well, they can't, uh, they can't have none of that. They can't be propagandized to believe that uh, Russians could possibly be nice because they have to be propagandized and indoctrinated to believe that Russians are evil and that uh, Libyans are evil and that Syrians are evil and that Iraqis are evil and Iranians are evil. That's, uh, that's the type of indoctrination that... Uh, that the German authorities would like to have. Meanwhile, they're indoctrinating children in all kinds of other ways, which are uh, also sinister, but I won't go there. Anyway, that is the clown world, Masha and the Bear, which really is a very, uh, a very wholesome cartoon. It's like the cartoons that I imagine all of us grew up with as well. Just good, fun, wholesome types of cartoons with no real political agenda at all. But uh, it has to be canceled because you can't have none of that. And uh, you, can't, you can't have a cartoon that may actually paint uh, a culture or society or a country as, as being friendly or as being kind. You can't do that. You have to indoctrinate the kids to hate. So I will leave it there. 
that is the clown world for the day. Check out Alexander's channel. Check out, let me slide through here. Nice place to park your car right on the sidewalk. And, jeez, uh, it is getting hard to, uh, to walk around in Cyprus. <laughs> my god all right uh check out alexander's channel check out the duran we'll probably be live streaming today and uh definitely check out our channel as well on the duran and uh, i will leave it there the duran.locals.com everybody join us there take care